What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update for Friday, April 12th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Want to stay informed? subscribe to my channel down below want to help keep other people informed well by all means share these videos with anyone you know like the content you see give it a thumbs up got something to say leave a comment down below the more interactions we get the more YouTube will spit this content out throughout the algorithm and it's been really showing in the past few days we've had more comments and the views have been up so hey we're helping to keep more people safe that's the goal of the channel all right, starting off today, we do have a few news stories that we're going to talk about. We'll take a look at some of our daily data, and a lot of the CDC data today has updated, including new variant data, which does include another new subvariant. I know, we might be heading into JN variant soup. Yes, there's quite a few JN variants now. And, of course, we're going to take a look at New York and... I didn't say the word New Jersey because, unfortunately, yet again, another day with no New Jersey. And we'll see if we have anything out of California and L.A. today. All right, starting off, speaking of California, in San Francisco, clusters of whooping cough are reported at private high school in San Francisco. Just reading the headline here, as you can see, I did tweet out the story. You can read the full story. We don't always read full. If you're new to the channel, we don't always read articles in full on videos because... Well, if we did, these would be 30, 45 minutes, maybe hour-long videos. Who knows how long they would go. But we do read headlines of stories in most cases. And in some, we do actually go a little further into detail if need be. All right, H5N1 news yet again. Bird flu found at four more dairy farms, including two in Michigan, one in Texas, and one in New Mexico, taking the total to 28 so you can see here this map it's starting to fill in a little more and i think that's going to continue do i think it's going to come to all 50 states can't say that but i can say that i don't think we're done with new states that are going to be added to this list uh and probably next just next week even I think we'll probably be adding more states to this. All right, take a look at this. Sick, hot world climate change favors disease vectors threatening to unleash more pandemics. It's true. There's several different things. It could lead to more airborne pandemics. It could also lead to illness from insects. You know, tick-borne illness. It's a real problem, not just in the United States, but around the world. And with our warming climate, you know, let's face it, some places here in the United States hardly even had a winter. We had like two weeks of cold here in Philadelphia. People say, oh, well, it was cold. No, we really had only two weeks where each night went down to below freezing. It wasn't that cold of a winter, and many can say the same across a good portion of the U.S. Not everywhere, but a good portion. These warmer winters uh, lead to uh, warmer summers, you know, warmer climate leads to more insects, and insects can carry disease. When you're getting tick bites, mosquito bites, you know, it can lead to potential disease. We all know about Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things that we need to be mindful of, and it's not just in the United States, it's around the world that is seeing global heating. Europe has seen some of its warmest and hottest years ever recorded yes i mean their summers have been really hot the past few years that's not good either all right moving on to this oh i should mention one other thing by getting hotter more heat related illnesses uh do occur you know such as heat strokes heat heart attacks dehydration of course dehydration can be self-inflicted by not drinking enough liquids if you don't drink enough liquids you will Obviously, get dehydrated when it's hot out. You should be drinking water, a lot of water, when you're in the heat. Not so much juice like I'm drinking right now. Okay, Georgia confirms third case of measles linked to unvaccinated person who traveled internationally. Yes, 
Um, yet again, another case of measles is being confirmed in Georgia. What I am noticing is that there seems to be nationally across the United States maybe a little bit of a slowdown now in the spread of measles. We haven't been reporting as many stories, although we're going to do one more story after this that is measles related, but maybe after initial surge it has slowed a little bit, but Hey, that could change next week. We could, next week could come and we could be reporting new measles cases every day. So we'll just have to take this day by day. But it would be nice if it was slowing down. We'll see. It's still spreading, though. Definitely still spreading. And without a doubt, I am sure there are a lot of cases out there that didn't get tested for, just didn't even get detected. Maybe someone says, oh, it's just a rat. It's just this or that. You don't need to see medical attention. You know how it goes. It's like COVID. Oh, it's just a cough. Well, no, it's not. It may be what it may be for you, may be a far worse for someone else. That's the way these viruses work. Case of measles confirmed on a plane that landed in Montreal. That's not good. We'll have to see if that leads to more cases. So we're still seeing stuff like this, which leads us to believe that uh, there may be more, more cases to come. And who knows? Where did that plane come from? Yep, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things. It came from Turkey is where it came from. If you want to read this full story, once again, I did uh, tweet this out. So you can read this uh, full story. Again, if we read these full stories, these would be really long. They'd be over a half hour long videos. And yeah, we're not aiming to do that. But I do have some good news today. I'm not always so negative. And take a look here around the Mid-Atlantic region. Aside from Boston, but that's going to change. Air qualities. It's not bad. Boston, that's going to change. You still have a couple hours. The ferns just starting to clear your area. It will. And look at this. The majority of the United States. It's not just a mid-Atlantic thing, southeast thing, Midwest, plains. The majority of the United States is seeing better air qualities today. Now, I wish California would load. Unfortunately, it can't be all 50 states. California is still having hot spots in the mountains and again from L.A. on southeast and even in the Bay Area of San Francisco. You are seeing some troubling air quality. All right, taking a look at Philadelphia EMS incidents, I need to put today's EMS incidents there. It's actually slightly better today. Still 747 EMS incidents. It's not near 800. We'll take it. Taking a live look at what's going on with the Philadelphia birds, I can tell you this much. When I was out doing my deliveries today, I saw a ton of ambulances. There was one period where I saw an ambulance crossing the road. Two seconds later, an ambulance was coming at me. I was leaving a pickup site, and there came another ambulance. So, three ambulances within 10 minutes. Yeah, it's been crazy all day, and at that time, there were 19 active EMS calls in Montgomery County. Uh, 547 at night. It's still at 14 calls at this time. Taking a look at Chester County. Yeah, there are some calls to be had there as well. That's actually quite a few for this time of night, and I'm seeing several which say respiratory difficulty. Drum roll, please. Did we ever get an upgrade date from Walgreens? I don't think we did. I'll refresh it again. I'll just keep refreshing until we do get one. Nope. And we're not going to get one over the weekend, because, you know, they do not update over the weekend. But drumroll, please, on this. I need to update this. I did not refresh this before we started. It's BioBot. Let's see if there is a new update from BioBot. And, okay, well, not the best of an update. Not the best of an update. You know, in the past, we were dropping. Eh, we're not so much dropping. Some places are. The upper Midwest, they're still dropping. The West Coast is still dropping. The South, leveling off a little bit. The Northeast, look at this. Northeast actually had an ever so slight rise. Not a big rise, just an ever so slight rise. To be expected, we've been seeing uh, increased levels of EMS activity, hospital activity, viruses in general in the Northeast. It normally does happen in the Northeast in the spring. All right, today we want to take a look at a couple wastewater sites. Yesterday we left you off with West Boise, Idaho, and we do want to do wastewater scan plus look at the CDC site. I got to correct myself on something from yesterday in relation to the Masters tournament, but first let's do a couple uh, wastewater scan sites. Let's go down to Louisville, Kentucky. And maybe we should look at Tennessee as well. Louisville, Kentucky. Wastewater levels are dropping at this time for COVID, for RSV, for influenza A, 
Influenza B eh, was dropping, slubbled a little bit, rising slightly for HMPV, dropping for norovirus, and pox none detected, and just a few detections of hepatitis A, nothing major at this time. I also, can we look anywhere else besides Memphis, Tennessee? Okay, we can at least come down to Ch Chattanooga, Tennessee. There's a reason why we're looking at Tennessee. Tennessee may be trying to rise again for COVID. We'll see. Ah, Chattanooga is. Look at that. Chattanooga is coming in at high, and there is definitely a rise for COVID once again. We're watching this because in relation to the eclipse. Some people went to the northwest of Tennessee, but again, it's not always about where they went. The people that went there, they got to go back to where they came from. So, so a lot of them went back to Tennessee, and take a look at this. There is definitely a rise in Chattanooga. And this is not like, oh, it's only 2,000 population. No, no, no. 400,000 population, and they are seeing a rise once again for COVID. RSV is flat at this time. Influenza A is seeing a slight rise. Influenza B is also seeing a slight rise. That's much more of a rise than if, with influenza B than A. A is actually not concerning at all. HMPV is seeing a slight rise. Even norovirus is starting to rise. Come on, what is going on here in Chattanooga? You're not doing good with the viruses. No Mpox, that's good news. And yes, there are a few detections of hepatitis A at this time. All right, let's go over. We have nothing in pandemic history today that I really need to share with you, so we'll skip over that tab. But we do need to go to wastewater uh, surveillance. And it would appear to me we might have a couple more red sites this week. Yep, seven that are in the 80 to 100% category, and 57 that are in the 60 to 79% category. That is down by 12%, but you can see here, 0% for uh, 80 to 100%, meaning it didn't drop. All right, we need to make good on something that we did yesterday, and I don't think it's actually updating. How about that? Okay, on a previous update, it did update. But yesterday, I was incorrect in stating where the Masters was being held. I know it's in Augusta, Georgia. That I know. I did not know it was in Richmond County. And here's Richmond County right here. Though it did not update this week, on the most recent update, and we know it didn't update because it's gray, the most recent update, and it did have an ever-so-slight rise for COVID in wastewater. Again, it's the CDC site, so all we can see here is COVID, but there was an ever-so-slight rise in Richmond County, Georgia, which is where the Masters is being held in Augusta, Georgia. All right, taking a look at some more CDC data. Remember, we looked at Tennessee over in wastewater scan. We'll look at more Tennessee uh, over the weekend on Sunday. We'll do our wastewater bonanza. And here's the problem. Look at this. Tennessee, you're back to high levels of COVID in wastewater on the CDC page. And it says sites currently reporting in this three. Maybe one of them's Chattanooga. I honestly don't know. Missouri, you're also seeing high levels now. We do know people from St. Louis went to the southeast to see the eclipse so you know something that we have to keep an eye on and we do have moderate levels now up in minnesota what's going on up in maine maine is low at this time moderate levels in alabama moderate levels in arkansas moderate levels in virginia moderate levels now in delaware and uh, there may be another moderate level that i'm missing here but for the most part we're not seeing any very high sites we're just seeing one level shy of that, which is Tennessee at this time. So that's something we'll have to keep watching. Taking a look at this week's hospital capacity update. Did we get an update? Well, here we go. Week ending in 4-6. 74.8% of all patient beds are being used in the United States. 1% is for COVID. 0.6% is for influenza. Taking a look at the ICU usage at this time, that's at 69.9%. COVID makes up 1% of that. Influenza makes up 0.7% of that. All right, moving on now to more data. This week, there was an 8.3% drop in COVID deaths. That's good to see. Taking a look at... Uh, deaths here on the map, but we do want to take a look at hospitalizations as well. Let's go over to that. COVID-19 hospital admissions in the past week, 7,318 admissions in the past week. That's down by 9.8% as well. So that's good to see. All right, taking a look here at the map, you can see there are some counties in the United States that actually did have a rise, but there's still counties that had a drop, and obviously the drop outweighed the rise at this time. We can actually take a look at ICU beds being occupied by patients, and there are a few counties in this country where it's, it's actually in the orange and yellow at this time, meaning 
an increase in the number of ICU beds being used. And it says percentage of staff ICU beds occupied by COVID-19 patients in the past week. So, okay, so these orange areas, see, we don't always look at this product, and we should, because it's a little concerning here. These orange areas represent areas where uh, quite a bit of your ICU usage is being used. That's not good. All right, moving on now to this. An epidemic status for COVID at this time. You can see COVID-19. It is likely growing in Massachusetts and Connecticut. Again, we saw a slight, ever so slight increase in BioBot this week in the Northeast. That's normal for spring. This does happen from time. To, last year didn't have much of a spring wave at all. The years prior did. And then when we come down here to epidemic status for flu, look at this. It is likely growing again in New York, Ohio, and also in Virginia. But when you take a look at the CDC influenza data, which we will in just a few moments, uh, it's not terribly concerning at this point. What is interesting is this, our bi-weekly, every other week, update of the variant proportion. We did add yet another uh, sub at least I think we did. JN.1 is at 83.7%. JN1.13 is at 9.1%. JN 1.18 is at 2.5%, and I don't recall JN 1.16 being there. Let me know if I'm wrong, but that's now J that's now four JN 0.1 variants dash subvariants with three subvariants and then JN 0.1 itself, which actually is a subvariant of Omicron. But you get the point here is we're slowly maybe going into JN 0.1. Variant soup, we'll see. BA.2, it still exists out there at 0.3%. Taking a look now at the flu update this week, you can see it's really dropping to low and minimal levels in many areas. There are still some moderate areas. New Mexico is moderate. Nebraska is moderate. Moderate in Michigan, moderate in Massachusetts, moderate in New Jersey, moderate in New York City, and we still have one area that's high. That is up in North Dakota and low levels in California. It's just about a shade below moderate at this time. And let's see, Iowa is moderate still. And look at that. Ohio has really decreased to low levels. But yet, when we go back to that epidemic status page, we do see they're reporting that it's likely growing in Ohio. I don't know. Let's see here again. Let me uh, rewind this. You can see here. Look at that. Ohio is rapidly dropping now. Doesn't make much sense to me. And by the way, Washington, D.C. did not report at all. New Jersey, no data. New York City today, 591 People have tested positive in the last 24 hours. And the hospitalizations, they didn't go below 500, but they made the 507, so that's pretty good. 507 people in the hospital, 60 people in the ICU. I'm confident next week, New York State should hopefully get below 500 people in the hospital. All right, let's see if there's any update from L.A. And yes, there is. L.A. for hospitalizations dropping. Deaths are dropping. Cases are dropping. Testing. And it's the positivity rate. It's not really rising that much. It's just bouncing off the bottom at this point. And drum roll, please. Let me refresh California. Let's see if we have an update. And we do. California, as of April 12th, it looks like a hospital admission, 763. That is down by 8.6%. COVID deaths at this time are down. That's good to see. I wish they would give an exact number of how many deaths they had in the past week. And the positivity rate went up ever so slightly for COVID. It's up to 2.3%. That's up by 0.2%. Influenza hospital admissions, 133 in the last week. See here? All those people say, oh, well, COVID's just a flu. Okay, here's California. They had 133 influenza hospitalizations, admissions. That's a heck of a lot less than 763 for COVID. Yeah, COVID's not just the flu. Sorry, thanks for playing. It's much more contagious than the flu. Uh, influenza deaths, it's saying here that 0.0% of deaths due to influenza in the past week. That's good to report. Influenza test positivity rate is still at 4.2%. Again, a lot less people get tested for influenza than COVID. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. Yes, this was one of our longer ones, but hey, there was a lot of new data today that we had to get out. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Want to see more content like this? Subscribe to my channel down below. Want to share this with anyone? Share it with anyone you know. Hit that share button. Got a comment on any of the data or news that you saw today or anything I said or anything you want to add? By all means, leave a comment down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you 
next time. Stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Friday evening. And if you don't see me this weekend, which you will, I'll be posting all weekend. If you don't uh, tune in this weekend, have a great weekend. Take care, everyone.